Bayonetta is dead. It's over. So, as you can tell by the title of this video, I, I played Bayonetta 3. I just, I just really didn't like it. It, it was really bad. And this game is well rated on IGN. It has a good Metacritic score. And I was so bored. Before we get into it, like full spoilers ahead, I know no one is really playing Bayonetta for the plot, but I am going to be talking about everything. Um, so if, if you care, if you care to be spoiled about this stupid, stupid game, you've been warned. Also, just like before we get into it, feel free to like, feel free to subscribe. It really goes a long way. I would love to make partner this year. Uh, and we still have a lot of progress to go. So be nice to me, pretty please. Also, I made a new Twitter. I tweet about as much as I upload, uh, so not very much. I have zero followers right now. Um, don't look at me. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it'll be in the description. I just, you know, sometimes I have questions for my audience and I want to know what you guys want to see. I am not far enough along on here to make community posts, so I can't necessarily ask you directly, but I have some ideas kicking around of videos that I want to work on and I would like to know if people want to watch me talk about those things. So that is available for you. You know where the resources are. You can go find them. You're an adult. Overall, I found that the story was very slow and very predictable. Again, I know that no one is coming into Bayonetta for the story. I know that's not why we're here. We're here for sexy combat. But I, it, it really got in the way this time. Like the story of the first Bayonetta is serviceable. Bayonetta 2, while I like that game the most of the three, it is not, she's not winning any Nobel Prize laureate Governor General Award for the literature. It's not great either, but Bayonetta 2 is like well-rounded enough that I don't really care. And the story is like fine, it's also serviceable. This one, I was confused. I didn't know the point. And I just felt like I saw everything coming from a mile away. There's only so many characters. So the solutions to the problems presented have to exist within the limited cast that we have. Viola, the reveal is that Viola is Luca and Bayonetta's daughter. And I was not surprised at all because the whole time I was sitting there and I was like, she's Bayonetta, right? I thought she was an alternate universe Bayonetta and that maybe she just didn't know, but it makes a lot more sense that she's the daughter because like, how would she not know that it's her? Also like, in all of these parallel universes, everyone looks the same. So that'd be like a very big change. And she doesn't have the same like body type as Bayonetta. Anyways, the whole time I was like, Viola's obviously deeply connected to Bayonetta. And Luca's obviously her fucking dad. Because that's a seed that they plant really early that, you know, lacks a bit of a payoff, but it exists. So I didn't care about the Viola stuff. I don't think she's a bad character. I don't think she's unworthy of being here. But I think maybe Bayonetta is the wrong franchise for this uh, cool grunge witch person. Also, like, we have a doctor who's responsible and knows everything about the homunculi, and we spend the whole game looking for this doctor, and then we're going to act shocked that the doctor's evil. Don't do that to me. Don't play around. What is this? And then he kills Jean? It, it was really bad. <laughs> it was really bad. I was just, like, so bored. I was like, that moment happened in the game. And I was like, did anybody move? Did anybody clap? I'm hearing crickets. The silence is radio. I just, nothing. There's nothing. And lacked substance. I made a video a couple months ago praising Bayonetta highly up to the angels, talking about how this game is like style and substance, or at least this franchise. But I think they lose it. They lose their way in this entry. Platinum Games flopped. It just, it is what it is. It's clear that they're trying to usher the franchise in a new direction. Um, and that's literally the only reason why Viola is here. Uh, I just didn't, I just didn't care for it. I understand wanting to try something new and that you don't want all of your games to look the same, but I was just like, who cares? Who cares about this girl? She's not winning a fan poll for like number one character. Who's interested? Like she just doesn't matter, sadly. Overall, the experience of Bayonetta 3 is notably slow, especially having played Bayonetta, the first one, so recently in October or September or whenever that game came out. I had to explain to my friend who doesn't really play games what the appeal of a game like Bayonetta is, especially because I led with the fact that the story isn't 
particularly compelling. So she was like, why would someone want to play this game? And I was like, they come for the really fast paced action. It's high octane. It's hyper feminine. It's hyper violent. And it blends all of that really, really well into a concise, well thought out package. And I just found that Bayonetta 3 didn't really have any of that in particular because it was so slow. There weren't a lot of action cutscenes, which like isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world. You know, as someone who's playing a game, you do want to be the one responsible for the action. Um, but in the previous couple of games, these cutscenes are really the opportunity for Bayonetta to slut it up, for lack of a better term. The developers choreograph them so, so well. The level of slay that they're able to achieve in what they do is just so special. So I was just, I was sitting there playing this game the whole time being like, where's the style? She doesn't even, she doesn't even dance. Like, it just wasn't it. It just wasn't. I'm so upset. In general, the the chapters of the story follow like a three, a three chapter arc. So every three chapters, you're in a new location with a new, either one or two demons. I do have to commend them. I do think the the weapon to demon to level design um, interplay, sure, let's call it that. Um, I do think the way that those elements interacted was effective. And I thought that was the most successful part of the game because there's such a focus on grandeur and size, size queen. Uh, <laughs> the demons really take the spotlight. Um, they're at the forefront. They're the main gimmick of combat for this entry. But as a direct result, things are so much slower because you're working on a bigger scale. So it makes sense that like optically heavier beings are not going to be able to move as fast. So you're just watching Madam Butterfly or whatever, just like take these big, slow swings the whole time. And like the enemy scales have gotten bigger to, you know, do these big kaiju type fights. Also, each of the three chapters ends with a huge genre breaking fight where Bayonetta literally rips her heart out and then becomes a massive demon. Really, really cool idea. If if these fights were programmed better or a little bit more interesting, then maybe I would have cared. But the first fight is like a huge Godzilla-esque rock, paper, scissors match that takes literally forever. <laughs> the next big demon is like the Madam Butterfly demon and she like is blowing bubbles at these like little flying guys. And that's also really slow. In the France kind of setting, there's... It should have been a rhythm game, and it it was and it wasn't. Um, but it should have been like a DDR style game and not. <laughs> Literally K-pop stands with their light sticks at the concert. It just, the way it played didn't make sense because there wasn't a strong enough visual indicator. And maybe that's just like my issue. I, I just find that the Switch is like not powerful enough to render the amount of detail that a lot of games demand. So I don't know, maybe it's giving old, but I just like felt eye strain while I was playing this game because I was like, I can't make out the details. Maybe if I was playing on a smaller screen, this would be better. So I struggled with this particular end fight because I was like, I can't see, because it's like little teeny bats that you're supposed to kill by pressing and holding the right button. And I was like, this is, this is too much. And I loved the design of the frog opera singer. So I was so disappointed that the mini game sucked. I'm going to say something controversial, but perhaps brave. I'm not interested in a multiverse story. I'm really not, unless you're gonna do it really well. Um, so like everything, everywhere, all at once is an excellent film. I was not expecting that level of, of nuance and exploration from Miss Bayonetta 3, but they could have at least given it a little bit something because they're basically doing Madoka Magica. That's kind of what they were doing. Hear me out. If you don't know the plot of that anime and you don't want to be spoiled, I guess like skip ahead. I'll throw in a timestamp just for shits. But Madoka is literally about like a time loop situation that creates multiverses. So Madoka ends up becoming infinitely powerful and godlike. And that's kind of what happens with Bayonetta. She goes to these alternate timelines, alternate universes, takes the powers from these other existing Bayonettas, becomes stronger herself. She's literally the Arch Eve. The game doesn't tell us what that is, but 
that's what they call her. Um, so I guess I have to use my adult brain and interpret that how I will. I guess it means she's like the ultimate, ultimate girl. Oh my, Bayonetta best girl? Arch Eve? That's kind of what they're saying. So yeah, she goes through and absorbs all their powers. And then at the end of the game, the end of the game plays literally the same as the beginning where Bayonetta loses and dies. Except this time, she's just decided. She's literally decided that she's extra dimensional. Um, and then a really fan servicey moment happens where Bayonetta's one and two. So basically just herself, but the designs from the first two games, they appear and they help out. Fan servicey has like a negative connotation and it is a little heavy handed, but honestly that part of the fight, very fun where they all are fighting together. It, it really, that was nice. I have to say again, I'm, I'm doing a lot of complaining, but there is merit here. And that fight was fun. It feels as though part of the Bayonetta rebrand has to do with redefining the franchise. So I think they're really turning Bayonetta into like a magical girl which I know that's like literally what a witch is, but I feel like there are some anime tropes that come into play, not just the Madoka stuff, but they're trying to bestow the franchise onto Viola. And then Bayonetta, the character Ceriza, is like moving into something different. We'll get into it. Also, like, I don't know if I needed particularly like culturally inspired alternate dimensions where Bayonetta and Jean look the same, but they just like are from somewhere else. I'm mostly speaking about like the Egyptian. One, I'm Middle Eastern, so I can I can roast this all I fucking want to. Um, I don't know if I needed Jihan and Fariza and for them to be like just like a hint darker. Like they have their summer tans. Like it's problematic. It's fine. Just overall, I felt that there was a lack of style. I enjoy Bayonetta's costume design. Like I think she looks good. The outfit is cute, but like I said earlier feels like we're leaning into some of those magical girl ideas, especially with like the long pigtails. The fact that she's wearing a skirt and in the first two entries, she's wearing basically the same thing. She's wearing a skin tight bodysuit. Bayonetta 3 is quite covered up. This isn't a fact, but this game doesn't feel like a rated M game. And it could be that they were trying to lean into hopefully making this one a little bit more child friendly. Like there is the naive angel mode that you can play in i did not um so i don't know what that looks like i've read online that it like barely makes a difference but at no point during this experience was i like scandalized by what was on the screen like in my bayonetta video that i made a couple months ago that opens up with um the introduction of an angel i think the angel is named joy and it's it's graphic and it's depiction of bodies um and this game had none of that it barely had Bayonetta being naked. Like, no more than what magical girl nudity is. It all ties back. They're trying to make it more age-appropriate, and it all has to do with her being a magical girl. Like, the new Bayonetta, that Bayonetta side story game that's coming out soon where they're, like, leaning into her being a young person. It's all part of the grand design. I know what they're doing. I see you, Platinum Games. I know what you're trying to do. We're trying to age down Bayonetta, make her a magical girl, and yeah, when she becomes naked at every point in this game, her whole body like glows red. This this version, this employment of implied nudity is very different from what we get in the previous games because when her outfits disappear, they show skin. Usually her whole outfit disappears. In this one, it was like she was still left with kind of like a V-shaped one-piece kind of swimsuit. So, like, where was the fashion? Where was the glamour? There was no glamour at DryCon this year. Where was the dancing? I just, oh, I just found myself disappointed at so many points. It's, it's, it's a shame. I think from a costume design standpoint, the, like, the alternate reality Bayonetta's, again, problematic, but they looked good. The clothing, the garments, that French one, a little bit kitschy, but the rest of them I quite liked. I loved Jean's maximalist, like, Twiggy-inspired look. I thought she was great. Um, I hated all of her segments. Um, for Jean, they do, like a, like, a Metroidvania, but worse. So she has playable levels, but she has no magic in them, so they're just, like, not fun. Very boring. But the fashion was really good. I love the fit. Viola, I appreciate, like, a grunge punk kind of moment. We love Vivian Westwood. Rest in peace. We honor icons in this house. 
I don't know if the aesthetic of viola plays well in the world of Bayonetta, but also it's not really chic anymore. It's maximalist. So if you have like gothic lowly Bayonetta and 60s inspired Jean and like 90s Westwood, sure. <laughs> I, I I can't I can't I can't conceptualize what that means, or like why these women are all in the same room and how they affect each other, but they also don't. Um, oh my gosh! Also, side note: there's just like one interaction between Bayonetta and Jean that I was so offended by. Cereza, this dashing fellow is Doctor Sigurd. He's come quite a distance for us. A pleasure to meet you, Cereza. John has told me much about you during our trip. Did she? I hope at least some of it was actually true. John has a habit of showing off for the gentleman. You bitch! <laughs> like, I did not like that. This game, Bayonetta 3, it's for the straights. Like, Bayonetta 1 and 2, yes, they're made by straight men for straight men. But there's something really queer about them. And you can find that in there. In this one, the whole time I was like, this is for the guys at home. The fact that our introduction to Viola, like as a character in the Bayonetta cast, in the group that we're playing with, she falls from a portal onto Enzo and then he realizes that she's a girl and then he is excited because breasts are on his body, smushing his face. I... I Bayonetta 1 and 2 would not have done that to me personally. I know there's an irony to talking about these games and then being like, I don't like the representation of women in them, but I didn't like the representation of women in these ones. And it, it was it was really a problem. I didn't enjoy it. This game probably took only a couple of days of my time. And yet I I feel consumed. I really, I really didn't like it. I've been thinking about it nonstop. I don't want to talk about Luca that much. But the whole game, I was like, what the fuck is happening with you? Why does it become a wolf? Why does What is the Twilight realm in this game? Why don't we get to go there? Who's Twilight Bayonetta? Is Luca God? I was so confused. And then they announce Singularity, you know, the homunculi being... I didn't talk about the homunculi. I didn't like them. You could have just done angels. You could have just done angels, and then they found a new way to make things awful by tearing through dimensions. But again, they're trying to distance themselves from the first two games. I understand that. It's the loud and clear. I hear you. The Switch is not powerful enough to display really, really detailed images. So sometimes I was just like, I feel like these probably look really good, but I can't tell. It's not HD enough. It's not 4K enough. It's just not happening for you, little baby Nintendo Switch. I swear to God, if they don't release the high-powered one in like March or whenever Tears of the Kingdom is coming out, what's the point of making it through the year? I just don't. I will simply expire. I'll cease to be. I just, I need more. It's so jarring to go from playing PS5 to playing Switch because the difference is becoming more and more stark, which is a shame because visuals are not the only thing that make a game. But in Bayonetta, we're here for the look. Um, back to Luca. Sorry. Thank you for the tangent. I appreciate your understanding. You guys have been really, really nice and patient with me these days. Um, so I just want you to know that I see you. Why was Luca Arch Adam? I didn't understand. More importantly, more importantly, why were Luca and Bayonetta in love? I laughed. When I tell you I laughed because it was so funny, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Another reason, another point as to why this game was truly for the straights is because it ended with a straight romance that nobody asked for. I was like, I can't believe this. And now they're sinking into hell together. It was funny. It was so funny. Funniest thing. I, I watched two stand-up specials today and that was the funniest thing I saw. So this game ends with literally everyone dying um, except for Viola and Rodan. Rodon is just around. He's minding his own business. Because angels and demons aren't really in the mix, he's like, I actually have nothing to do. 
I wrote a script for this video, but in talking, in just verbalizing my thoughts out loud, I've come to the understanding that this was like a send-off for the franchise. Bayonetta is dead. It's over. This was a goodbye to the old franchise. We have a new Bayonetta. Her name is Viola. I care significantly less about her. In the last scene, she enters and she's wearing a scarf and glasses because it's not enough to just out loud say, you're my mom and dad. We had to get a visual indicator. So she's wearing Bayonetta's glasses. Sorry, Cerise's glasses. Bayonetta is... Viola is Bayonetta now, so we have to be careful when we're using that name. Um, <laughs> she's wearing Cerise's glasses and Luca's scarf. And I was just like, okay, we know who she is. What What do you want? Do you want me to clap? Like, the, I'm glad the game's done. Bayonetta's going to be different moving forward. They're obviously aiming to move in a different direction. Given the fact that they only release a game like every seven-ish years, whatever. I'm not holding my breath. Whatever. When it happens, it'll happen. I probably won't buy it. Or honestly, I'm a sucker because I did. I ended up buying this and I said I wasn't going to buy it. And now here I am talking about it. Do you want to hear me talk about Bayonetta in seven years? <laughs> I'm, I'm tired of myself. I don't know how you sit through this. Most of you don't. That's the actual answer. Um... Aha, uh -huh. oopsie, sometimes your phone dies in the middle of recording. Ha 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 I live, I laugh, I love, and I slay another day. The tenacity I hold in my small, fragile being is just insurmountable. Anyways, like and subscribe. I made a Twitter. Uh, I have a TikTok. That stuff's all going to be linked. Um, feel free to check it out if you want. Okay, bye.